All right, guys, so yesterday we learned how to graph sine and cosine functions. So we are just going to do a little bit of um, review with that today. I'm going to go through two problems with you. This first one is the last one we didn't finish from the notes yesterday. So you're just going to do this in your notebook. And then the next one is going to be one of the problems on the worksheet that you received today in class. So I'm going to start with this problem. Um, the first thing that I recognize is I've got a sine function, but this here is pretty messy. It's something that has to be rewritten before I can even get going. So I'm going to start by rewriting that. Um, so this becomes negative 2 sine something plus 1. I have to pull the 1 half out. So when I divide 3 pi over 2 by 1 half, that's the same as multiplying by 2. So this cancels, and I'm left with minus 3 pi. So now I've got my new function. It's the same function. It's just been rewritten so that we can use our transformations to help us through this. So I'm going to go through just like I did yesterday in class. I'm going to start with uh, everything on the x-axis. So step one is figure out uh, where my starting point is. And my starting point comes from whatever horizontal shift I have happening. So looking here, I see that I'm going to be shifting to the right by 3 pi. So I'm going to go ahead and put that right there. And then after I have my starting point, I have to figure out what my ending point is. My ending point is going to be one full period later. Now, the standard sine function has a period of 2 pi, um, but in this case, I have a b value. And that b value is going to affect my period. So my formula, remember, is 2 pi divided by b. So in this case, it's 2 pi divided by 1 half, which means my period is 4 pi. So now I'm going to take my period, and I'm going to add it to my starting point, And I see that my ending value is going to be 7 pi. So I'm going to put that here. OK. Uh, now I have to find all of my halfway points. So halfway between 3 pi and 7 pi. Uh, it's going to be 5 pi. Halfway between those two values, I'll have 4 pi and 6 pi. And now I'm done with everything on my x-axis. <coughs> okay, so I'm switching to my y-axis. My y-axis is going to be uh, defined by two things, my midline and my amplitude. So my midline, I see that I've got a plus 1 here. That means that it's been shifted up 1. So... Let's call it like right there. There's my midline of my graph happening at 1. And then my amplitude, this is my a value, negative 2. Now, the negative does not actually uh, get recorded in my amplitude. The amplitude is just the 2. The negative means something else. The negative is going to have a, uh, it's going to mean that my graph is reflected. And we'll deal with that in just a second. But for right now, uh, my amplitude's 2, which means my max is going to be at 3. My min is going to be at negative 1. Okay, so that's everything for my y. Now I'm going to switch colors, and I'm going to do my actual graph. Sine function. The sine starts on the midline. So my starting x value was this 3 pi. So I'm going to go to my midline, and that's where I'm starting. Typically, my sine function goes up and then back down. Here, because I've got a negative out front, that's a reflection. So instead of going up first, I'm going to go down first. So when I get to my next x value, the 4 pi, I'm going to be at my minimum. And then I'll be at my midline again. And then I'll be at my maximum. And then I'll be at my midline again. Connect my points. Oh, geez, I missed there. It's okay. There's my graph. So it looks something like that. My domain, negative infinity to infinity, all reals, all the time. That's always going to be the case for sine and cosine functions. And then my range is going to be from negative 1 to 3. Okay. So that is the first example. Go ahead and pause this if you need to get everything down. Um, and then get your worksheet ready because we're going to be doing number 2 on your worksheet next. Okay, so this is number two on your worksheet that you got in class today. Um, 
first thing to recognize, they are not using x here, they're using theta. That's okay. Theta is serving the same purpose, so don't let that freak you out. Um, the other thing is on your worksheet, this graph has actually not been provided for you. That's okay. You guys are going to be sketching out a graph that looks something like this. Um, if you notice when you look at your problem that you're going to have a um, shift, a horizontal shift to the left, then when you make this graph, you should probably have a little bit of additional space over here since you're going to be shifting to the left. Um, but overall, like this is what I'm expecting from you with your graph, and then we'll be putting all of our tick marks onto it. Okay, so again, going through this cosine function, so I'm thinking about that. I'm going to start with my x-axis. So horizontal shift tells me my starting point. Um, but looking up here, there actually isn't a horizontal shift at all. So I'm starting at 0. And then I have to add one period. So my period is 2 pi over b. I do have a b value. That's my b value there. So my period is 2 pi over 3. So obviously adding that to 0, that's easy. You don't have to actually do this on your paper if you don't want to. So I know that I'm going to be ending at 2 pi over 3. Okay, now I have to figure out all my halfway points. So halfway between 2 pi over 3 and 0 is just 1 pi over 3. And then halfway between 0 and pi over 3 is pi over 6. And then halfway between pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3, uh, 1, let me think. So I have 1 pi plus 2 pi, that's 3 pi. Um, 3 pi can't be cut in half, so I doubled the denominator, so it'd be 3 pi over 6, but that simplifies down to pi over 2. So there I've got everything for my x-axis. Now I'm going to switch. I'm going to do my y-axis. My midline is this plus 2 here. So there's 2, and I'm going to draw my midline in. Okay, and then my amplitude. My amplitude comes from this one half. So if that's one and that's three, then this is 1.5 and this is 2.5. So this is gonna be a really like skinny, narrow um, graph. Okay, so I did my midline, I did my amplitude. I've got my X figured out, I've got my Y figured out. Now it's time for the graph. Okay, so I'm starting at zero cosine. Cosine does not start on the midline. It starts at a peak or a valley, a max or a min. Um, <clears throat> the standard function starts at a max. This does not have a negative at all, so that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to go up to 2.5. That's going to be my first point. Then at the pi over 6, I'll be at the midline. At the pi over 3, I'll be at my minimum value of 1.5. Pi over 2, back to the midline. And 2 pi over 3, back to the maximum. Now just try to make this curvy as possible. So it should look something like that, right? You don't want to just draw straight lines. This should not look like an absolute value. Um, it should be kind of curvy like that. Amplitude, sorry, I didn't write it before, but the amplitude's one half. Our domain is negative infinity to infinity all the time, all reals, all the time. Sine and cosine are always going to be all reals for the domain. And then our range is from the... Uh, uh, sorry, 1.5 to 2.5. Okay. All right, so there you go. There's two examples. Hopefully that kind of helps to solidify the concepts. Work together in class. You're finishing up the worksheet that you received today, and you're also finishing up the worksheet uh, from last night's homework. I'm checking both of them tomorrow. All right, guys, see you tomorrow. Have a good night.